Well, hey, fish heads, good morning. This is a special edition of the spray session for Jekyll Bates. I am Jen Cravasi. It is, I want to say it's Tuesday, June the 4th in 2019, and I'm pretty excited about this particular spray session because if I have my facts right, I'm pretty sure that my buddy in Tennessee, in Dandridge, Wyatt Crippen, is on his very last chemo treatment period he's on his last one um, and for those of you who didn't catch the um, the mystery tackle box repaint I did um, a Tennessee darter pattern for Wyatt he has become one of my favorite favorite people awesome young man in Dandridge Tennessee you guys can find more out about this young man fine young man at Warriors for Wyatt on Facebook and there's also a GoFundMe page um, they are nowhere near where they need to be as far as uh, fundraising and if any of you have any experience in your lives with someone you love or someone you know or maybe you you know it's an exhausting process both emotionally spiritually and financially so if there's any way you guys can help please do um, I don't get on a bandwagon I don't do a whole lot of charity talks or ask you guys for money this is one exception um, he, he's, he's really pulled at my heartstrings over the last couple of couple of months few months and it's legit and he's a cool kid he is a cool kid it, he doesn't deserve it nobody deserves to suffer from cancer so if there's any way you guys can help this family out go see Warriors for Wyatt on Facebook I'll leave you some links in the description below. But today is a very special occasion because Thursday is going to be his last chemo ever. I'm going to do him a really cool trout pattern um, on a glide bait. Now, I know he does a lot of river fishing. If this turns out the way I want it to turn out today, I'm hopeful because it's so heavy he may not fish it. But it's I, I'm kind of doing it more as a keepsake for him and his family. Um, they have taken up airbrushing and they're doing really well as a matter of fact um, Wyatt's dad David just recently um, sold a tackle box at a benefit for a really good amount of money which was great it goes right back into their family and and funding the the cancer treatments for Wyatt so this one I'm not gonna auction off I'm gonna gift it to the family they can do whatever they want to do with this but today let's paint something cool together this is Wyatt's trout now I did print out a picture of this, but it's not a really good picture. The colors aren't true in it. I'm low on ink, obviously. Um, but I also have the same pattern that I'm going to be using on my phone. So that's what we're going to do. The first thing that I'm going to start out by doing is spray from around the eye all the way back to the back of the trout with a yellow. Now, I don't have the exact yellow and I really don't feel like mixing yellow and I'm not going to have to. I'll show you a little trick to soften up any color and most of you guys or many of you guys, maybe not, might already know this trick. But there is not yellow across this entire bait. But from right around the eye area pretty much down the lateral line and I'm going to go one more just below. I want to take a look at the tail. See if I want to start out by putting whoops, yellow on the tail. And I can. I'm going to do a little bit of yellow on this tail. We're going to do the same thing on the other side of the trout. Just from the eye area straight down that lateral line and then one more underneath of it. That's all we need. Don't need more yellow than that. Now in order to soften this, I'm going to come right behind it. I don't need a low pressure with this. With some pearlized white, I'm going to keep it right in the, I'm not even going to clean the chamber out. But watch what happens. Also spreads that yellow out a good bit. And 
and we now have a much softer got a little bit more on that side that's okay just give this other side one more shot just a little bit of yellow and then just a little bit more pearlized That really softens that up. Gets it right around the color that you want to see it as. Now there's a good bit of dark on this pattern. Shows up a lot better on this. But we're going to be using some black magentas and some moss greens in this and then we're going to mute that out with a little bit more pearlized. But the basics, over top of this, I'm going to throw a stripe of pink directly down the lateral line. And then I'm going to add a little bit of lime green up top and then get to work on these, uh, these ovals. There's about 10 of them on each side and that'll be in the black magenta. So let's see how that turns out. Now for this, um, I've got lime green loaded in the chamber now. I'm just going to come down at an angle and it has really brightened this up way more than I wanted it to. So I think we're going to soften this with a little gold. try and stay with as many pearlized colors as I can. That is the intent. Maybe just a wee bit of darker green. Just a little bit more tropical green in here I can use up. And then I'm going to soften everything up before I put this moss green on. with some more white because you really want these colors to be muted. That is one of the keys to the pattern. probably even do a little bit of primer on there, but I don't want to completely lose the colors. I just want to soften them. And I'm not, I'm not pulling all the way back on this trigger. We do have a good bit of true white on the bottom of this, so for that I am going to come in on the belly and just blend. Now that's starting to look quite a bit better. Still has that translucent appearance, which is what we want. Hit a little bit more on the other side, and then we're going to give this a quick heat set off camera. A lot of times you can soften up the impact of what color you're spraying by spraying at an angle. That's always a safe bet. The next thing we're going to do before we put on the moss green is we're going to add this bright pink to the lateral line. Now it's prominent on juveniles. It's more prominent on the adult species of the rainbow, but you can still see that bright pink line. It actually shows up. I should probably just use the phone from this point and not use the washed out picture with bad ink. Um, but we're going to bring this straight down 
And the cool thing about the glide bait and this particular fish is that both of the lateral lines are incredibly straight. So it's going to look very similar if we can draw a straight line. And if you guys are not used to drawing a straight line, what I recommend you do, and you can even use your hand as a brace and move it back and forth. But if you want to freehand it, just practice on trigger control. Go from wide and then pull the trigger back a little bit harder. And you'll find that if you move faster, your line's going to be straighter. If you slow down, it has a tendency to waver a little bit. So a little bit quicker, and then just practice whatever's going to work for you, whether you want to hold the fish at an angle. Now I've also reduced my PSI. I was running about 25 to 30 PSI on this. What I'm now doing is about 10. So we're just going to shoot this on both sides. I'm going to do just a little bit because you can see there's a little bit of pink on the gill plate. And this is, this is fluorescent pink, so this is going to be just a little bit too pink for this. And then we're just going to walk right back that lateral line right to the tail and then just come back once. And we have it. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Set this in the cradle for a second. And we're going to keep muting it, but this time what we're going to do is mute it. I've got some PH Martin's iridescent. These are calligraphy colors, but they are acrylic. They are water-based acrylic inks with tons of glitter in it. So let's just come back and get that little bit of pink in that gill plate and then just come right down that lateral line and there you have it now you've got your pink in dump the rest of that off there's not a whole lot of it left put my createx fluorescent pink away and actually it's a raspberry this is a fluorescent raspberry truth be told it's not pink so what color is this this is Does it tell me? No, doesn't have a color number, but it's fluorescent, two ounce fluorescent raspberry. And we're gonna soften everything up here. I think what I'm probably gonna do before I soften it with uh, white, this iridescent white, let's go ahead and put my moss green on top. And I'm gonna run moss green on the top before I put the magenta. The magenta is gonna be a really reduced light spray and it's going to go, it's going to be like one of the last things that we do on here because I'm going to have to probably cut some oval stencil for it. But let's get in this moss green. And if we look at the pattern, we can pretty much get the dark images from this. But it comes right over the top of the gill plate, and then there's a very distinct line, and then it runs across the top. Uh, it gets lighter as it runs along the back of the trout near that dorsal, and then kind of muted. We've got some golds in here. Let's see if we can pull that off. There, I've dropped you guys a, a good bit. We're going to come right over the top of that eye and then run back. Right over the top of the eye and run back. And we're going to trail off as we go back. And do the same thing on the other side. It looks like I have an oops here, but that's going to disappear. I'm not even going to worry about that oops. Uh, that's going to disappear when I put this iridescent over it. Just run that along the, and fade it down a little bit, fade it down on this side a little bit. And then just darken that along the top here and then just fade it back because you don't want it as dark on the back as you have it on the front. And yes, I have noticed that we've lost a little bit of that light yellow. Not 
too worried about that. I might toss it in when I finish the detailing. But I might not. I'm actually thinking about replacing that with gold. One of the things I have I have not done on this is set up a set pattern that I wanted to, except for this picture. So this is one of those spray sessions where as I go in my head, I'm figuring out my color scheme. And you guys can do that too. There's absolutely nothing wrong with figuring out color schemes on the fly. Add just a little bit of yellow back into this. Too much because I want this to run underneath this pink and I want it to be real light now that we have that lateral line I'm just going to come back on the other side do the same thing and there we have it Add a little bit of cleaner to that. My cleaner today is Iwata. It's the Iwata Media Airbrush, Airbrush Cleaner. I get the big 32 fluid ounces off Amazon. There is a description in below that's got that link for you guys if you're looking for decent cleaner. Some people tell me to reduce it. I don't. Cleaner is cleaner and it's already pre-mixed. Um, I don't want to mess with what's not broken. It works for me. I, it keeps my airbrush clean. Does what it's supposed to do. Now, there's a difference between this stuff and this pearlized that I just put back. This is a bit more runny. This has got a lot of shimmer to it. Just one eyedropper full is all I need. Because if you put too much of this stuff on, you really lose color integrity. But we do want to shimmy it up just a little bit. And there we have it. Now one thing, go ahead and get this picture back on the tail here. I'm going to use, uh, I think, either a Burnt Sienna, this one right here, it's a pretty decent color match, real light on the tail, and then I'm also going to model in a little bit of it towards the back, because I can see little strains of like a brownish mixed in with this green all throughout this trout, and then we definitely have some gold highlights that we want to drop in. And then burnt sienna is what I'm going to come back and do this. And I'm going to cut a stencil that's going to mimic the way this looks in this particular photograph. And then I also have to cut the stencils for the ovals. So that's coming. But before I do that, I want to make sure all of my base colors are laid in the way I'm happy with. Because we are going to put the black spots in here and run those right down to the tail. We're going to put a little bit of black magenta and run that very lightly. I might even mix some black magenta with moss and just reduce that down real good. We'll see. Again, this is one of those on the fly patterns. No pun intended because it's trout. So we are figuring it out in our heads. And hey, what would you guys do differently? I would like to know how you guys would put this pattern together. Together? Is that a word or is that from my fictionary? I would like to know how you guys put it together. So leave me a comment. I know there's a, a lot of really good pattern painters out there. And we're going to try and stay with the tradition of this in that 
the darker edges and the lighter interior. So I'm going to run my edges dark and let that naturally stay light on the inside. And then I'm going to come back, hit that, hit the top, run that down and the underside if I can get it. And then just run a little bit just in spots. Just, just a little. You don't want to kill that. You don't want to put too much brown in it. But there is a little bit of sienna kind of throughout there. And as far as this is concerned, I'm super happy with that color match. I think that turned out pretty well. Let's cradle this and make sure you guys are in frame so that you can see it. Let's even bring that a little closer. Oh, crickets. Yeah. I definitely think that's a good match. I will have an actual photo of this. In the uh, at the end of this video. Can you guys see these white spots? We're going to need to add those as well. And that might just be from the flash photography. But it might not. So we're going to add just a couple of little tiny dots into this pattern. Yeah. All right, we're getting there. I have loaded a little bit of gold in the chamber. And what I'm hopeful I can do is kind of soften up this gill plate a little bit. And this one on this side as well. Maybe just a little bit through here. Okay. I should have a bit of raw umber which has a greenish hue to it. There we go. That's a greenish brown. And I think it's a pretty decent representation of a couple of things going on through the middle of this. If you guys can see this, there's a little bit of a darker streak right above, kind of goes from the lateral line over the top of the ovals. So we're going to put that in. And do that on both sides. Now comes the fun part. We're going to heat set this. Add just a little bit of that, what's left in the chamber, just to deepen the eyes a little bit. Not much. Just want to get it on the edges because we're going to be adding some cool eyes to this. Come back to the tail. You know what? I'm going to add just a wee bit more. As I go through this, I'm seeing just hints of this. I'm also going to add it right there. Right there. Now, let's make some ovals. I need to do is the first thing I need to do is draw the ovals and you know what I'm going to do two sets of ovals and I'll show you why here in a second but I also want to use white so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit easier so if you guys notice on this trout the first there are there are ten I've counted there's uh, one two three four five one, two, three, four, five. 
There's maybe a, maybe 11, but I could do six and five, but I'm gonna do two sets of these because these ovals fatten up as you go towards the tail. And then these ovals going towards the nose and the gill plate are skinnier. So let, yeah, let's, let's do it accurately. Let's do six and five. So in order to do that, you kind of want to hit your medial line, your median line rather, and look at your space. Well, that will certainly do, but I don't need all of that. I'm going to be using right to about here. And then on the other one, I'll be using even less space to do the same thing. So maybe we'll come back a little further. We'll see. Maybe go right to about there. And that's the space that I can use. If I use more than that, then it's not going to look right. So we're going to cut that right there. Or at least not do anything there. So then, knowing what space I have, I just want to draw six little ovals. They don't have to be perfect. Okay, and then on the other side, we'll go from this point. I'm not cutting this off specifically because I want, I don't want to get overspray on the gill plate when I'm doing this, but I just need five of these that are a little bit fatter. There we go. That's going to go towards the tail because my tail's skinnier. I'm good with that. Grab our X-Acto knife. You guys can probably cut this as well as I can. So I'm just going to do one of these on camera and then not bore you by cutting all 11 of them on camera. So I'm going to pop this one out, show you what it looks like after the X-Acto knife has done its work. And there you go. I'm going to go do the rest of these real quick. There we go. And voila. Here's something that's cool because if you've played along with me today, you've maybe done a practice line on a piece of paper. That's kind of cool because we can practice dropping these in black magenta onto that piece of paper right in the middle of the medium. I don't know why I can say median line. There we go. It's English, Jennifer. You can speak it. We're going to drop this right in the middle of the median line. And we're almost going to treat this like we would treat other stencils and not do a real dark. We're going to stay to the edges here. And if you notice, what I'm doing, you can still see that pink through there just like you can on this trout. That's the goal. That's the goal right there. It also gives you an idea of how good or bad your ovals look. And uh, uh, it's, it's okay. Um, they're not perfect ovals. But then again, nothing in life is perfect. So it's a representation, an interpretation. It is what it is. For the purpose of this video, it's just fine. Now, then I'll flip it, flip it, because I remember we left that in there for a reason, and then I can just kind of go over this a little quicker, and voila. So we go over here. I should have almost an ex. Oh, look at that! It lines up perfectly. I did what I was supposed to do. Awesomeness. So we're going to drop these in first. We're going to go right down the center of the median line.
it off. Flip it. Skinnier towards the tail. And you know what? Unfortunately, I'm going to hit this. So it's going to be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to cut this right here. I think this is the back of a, a VMC treble hook pack. And I'm, I'm kind of hooking my hand. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm hooking my hand around this to keep my grip steady while I lay this on to our Now if I need to come back through with that pink, I can. I'm definitely going to need both hands to move this. The only thing we have to do is use the other side. So we want to wipe this down, make sure all of our loose paint is off. Move it with our hands, or if you guys are wearing gloves, do that. Same thing with this. Just wipe off any residue so you don't get any schmutz on the trout. Come through, line it up. Maybe a little bit darker on this one. Steady yourself on this. And there you have it. I am going to use a pre cut on this. And we're going to come in. Let's take a look. We do have some spots, and of course, there we go. We do have some spots on the belly, but not as many. But we're just going to kind of lightly throw those in. I still have this loaded with black magenta. Super light on that. They are using black. Well, it's not anyone using, but the fish has got bl true black in the top of this. So I think we're going to switch it up. Let's put this other side in, then I'm going to switch out to black. And then we're going to do the entire bait over one more time with the uh, PH Martins and this is going to be real light just to put a little bit in while I have this still in get just a little bit up here bring you guys into frame so you can see what the heck I'm doing. Darkening up this eye just a little bit, very lightly. Just giving just a couple of spritzes. There we go. Got some cleaner in that. I'll wipe this out real quick. And we're going to put in some wicked jet black. Non reduced.
low pressure. Make sure that our pressure is good and it seems to be. And we'll go on top of this and we're going to do this very lightly. I mean very, very lightly. Because we don't want to overwhelm the bait. Because remember, we are coming back. I wish I could just do that. That's not going to let me. Um, with one hand. This has got, these helping hands have got so much paint on them over the years. The excess off. Nice and light. as we go back. Now we get to add white back in. Hang on just a s Oh, you know what? We didn't do one more thing that I want to do, and that is add in this. Let me see if I have anything smaller for the tail. See how crazy this may or may not look. I don't know. I just don't know. The lines are much smaller. Not all of them. Like maybe just do bits and pieces. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try that. Okay. Bring you guys up just a little bit. I'm going to do... There we go. It's like, come on out of there. Low pressure. Sometimes it'll... Just a couple on here do the other side and then I'm going to lay the rest of that in by hand. That's that's what I've decided to do. Same thing on this side. There's a couple of spots. Not the whole thing. And then what I can do to supplement that because as you guys can see when we get this up here probably just drop some of this stuff in with a brush if you want to run some randomness through the only thing is you don't want it too much darker than what you've sprayed so just go throughout touch the pattern up that's really going to bring it together and give it that more natural look. And you can drop the same thing because remember, we're still going to do this white on top of everything. So you can drop in just, to, you don't want to overkill it because anytime you put a paintbrush down on a bait, your color is going to be darker than the airbrush because your airbrush is atomizing the paint shooting it real fast and that's not what's happening with your paintbrush it's still globbed the paint's still globbed together but it does kind of add some cool features when you just drop that in so we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the bait just drop in a couple lines. Get that looking like it's always been there. I have no idea if my camera is in focus for you guys. I'm really hoping it is because I'm doing close detail work so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And then just I'm not even adding extra paint to the brush. We're just going to drop in a couple of different black spots throughout and then hit the cheeks a little bit. Maybe a couple. throughout there, come back 
drop this in three one do one two three I'm do an extra one on this side so it's not okay now we need to do some white and I'm not gonna I'm debating on whether or not again I'm in my head on this on this pattern whether or not I want to do iridescent which is super thick or just a little bit of pearlized white I think I'm gonna go for the thinner stuff here oh cleaning this thing black takes a lot longer to clean a chamber out than anything else she says you're looking like a bad man i said enough she says your spirit doesn't move like he did before all right i think i'm going to drop a little bit more low pressure of this fluorescent raspberry in just to keep that prominent there we go happier happier Yep, yep. Good. Now, I'm going to get that blinding bright color out and hit this whole thing with a little bit of pearl white. Pearl is almost a transparent color. It, it does have the shimmering qualities, properties to it, so it's not completely transparent. All right, that should be enough. I never know if I'm gonna, I hate running out in the middle of it when I'm doing both sides. So let's, uh, ready? Here we go. All this is doing is softening. And that's what you want this to be a soft pattern because the trout in real life looks almost translucent when they're young. And you wanna try and represent that and imitate it through the pattern that you have and I would say not bad not bad I think we've gotten close I am happy with it wasn't sure how this was going to turn out but since it's for Wyatt let's not forget I think uh, I think maybe the good Lord was smiling on me I hope because it's for a good purpose so congratulations on your last chemo Wyatt this one's for you I hope you enjoy it uh, it's almost two ounces, so you're probably going to need a heavier rod to throw it. But if you don't want to throw it, I certainly understand. But um, you are a brave, brave, brave young man. And I'm very proud of you. Okay, now we got to put the eyes on. And the best eyes that I know for this are these real eyes. They're actually just called real eyes. They're nine millimeters, which is what you need for something like this. They come in a 14 pack, it's 2816. You can order them at Lure Parts Online. I try and give you guys as many resources as I can, and since it's not, we're not cheating or hiding or doing anything crazy, um, hey, it's free info, helping you guys out. So if we look at the pattern, ding, look above, there's a pattern. Um, this is pretty much what the eyes look like. So we're just going to drop that in. And these are super sticky eyes. So that's one thing I don't have to worry about is any issues with the eyes coming out. Just want to push these in, get them all the way in. That looks pretty darn good and uh, this is still tacky I'd, I'd have heat set this bait but because it's a little bit tacky I'm trying to touch it as little as possible all I'm trying to and not get Casey's hair on there not that Casey doesn't want to participate she's a good dog all labs are good all dogs are good it's their owners that suck sometimes um, Casey loves to participate in things like this 
There we go. Just pop that in. I'm just using my little Swiss Army knife to do that. Alright. And if you guys can see it, here's the trout. And we're going to clear coat it now. You say, what are we going to do? We're going to clear coat it. I'm going to brush this on. I'm not dipping this bait. Uh, I could probably dip this part of it and hang it weird, um, but I'm not. I'm just going to brush the entire thing in epoxy. Last but not least, because I almost forgot. How did you guys let me forget that? We got to put in this pectoral fin. What? This is not going to be hard, though. Just make a, an edge. And if you look at it, it's one line, cuts in, comes up to a tip. So one line cuts in, comes up to a tip. Super easy. We're going to do it on both sides. And we're going to go back to our burnt sienna. If we look at it right here, it's in an upward direction. It's coming off of the bottom of this gill plate. So we're going to line it up with the line on there. Specifically so you guys can see it. We're going to line it up with that line right there. Let's get our burnt sienna back out. And because we want to make sure that this is going to look decent, we got to make sure the colors match. I think the colors, yeah, that's a color match right there. If I ever saw one. That's it. Bring my pressure down a little bit. And let's go. There's that. Um, right at the edge of the gill plate. So the closer I can get it on that gill plate, the better. There we go. Come back, do the other side, flip this over, get your residue off. Don't want residue. Line it up, bottom of the gill plate. There's the gill plate, there's this. Looks good, both sides. darken the top of the line. Yes, we're going full detail. You betcha. Why do we do that, you ask? Why, why, why? Because it looks good. Practice, 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 practice. Line that back up and just a little bit to darken it along that edge. See what that does? Everything. So we're on this side now. Come back. Make sure it's lined up properly. Just hit that top. Just a little bit of shade makes all the difference in the world, folks. All of it. All of it. Do the same thing on this side. Line that back up. The one that's the one thing that's tricky. You gotta make sure it's lined up. Maybe just add a little bit of depth there because it's coming out of somewhere. Ta-da! All right. That is the day, folks. Let's get this in some clear coat and we'll show it to you when it's finished. <laughs>